event that we're sure uh, will mark a before and an after in the Mexican cannabis industry, an event where we get all get to know each other as stakeholders of this booming market, uh, but also as, uh, as concerned parties in, wa in whatever it is to come. Uh, my name is Adrian Cisneros. I'm head of, uh, of Harris Bricken, an international law firm with a strong uh, cannabis practice in many jurisdictions and now operating in Mexico. Uh, this afternoon, we have the pleasure of hosting uh, Chris Besenoy. Um, Besenoy, right? Besenoy works out. Besenoy. Besenoy. Uh, my apologies, and I have just asked you that. <laughs> um, uh, which is one of the leading, uh, leading uh, Canadian, and if I may say, uh, and if I may say, North American uh, cannabis security experts. Okay, um, uh, he has uh, he he has uh, he has run the the, the, the full uh, the full gamut between uh, be, uh, be, between uh, working as a security guard to to be in charge of implementing of implementing the uh, the security strategies and the risk analysis strategies for many public uh, public and private entities uh, in his native Canada. Um, now uh, he is. Primarily, the the the, the go-to person in all secure in all in all security matters pertaining facilities, cannabis facilities in Canada. Now, I have a question about uh, uh, about your background, uh, sure. and, and this is going to sound a, a bit like an academic question. Uh, I, I, I'm a lecturer myself, but I see that that you under uh, you have a police studies degree. Yes, I actually do. It's, it's through a accredited college, uh, but primarily I wanted to be a police officer. So I went through police foundations and learned and trained to become a police officer originally. Okay, okay. So um, uh, uh, how did you expand into starting your own businesses and then focusing on the, not only in, 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 the, in the security management, management business per se, but also the risk analysis uh, uh, and compliance with, uh, with any regulatory, uh, regulatory requirements in Canada? Well, essentially, like I said before, I want to become a police officer and very quickly realized that wasn't where my skill set lied. And so I decided not to become a police officer and get more into security risk management. Uh, so for the past, after I decided not to become a police officer, I went, was employed by the city of Toronto, RBC Bank, working on worldwide projects. And after I left RBC Bank, I decided that I was going to start my own consultancy, primarily in the technical security field. I myself have close to 14 manufacturer certifications in security technology. And through that, I met some key strategic people within the cannabis industry in Canada back when it was first starting. And I was privileged to start working on frameworks and regulatory requirements and designs and application documents for a lot of the large producers in Canada. And then from there, it just ballooned outwards. We worked on over 470 applications and we've helped over 120 people get a license. And recently, we're proud to expand worldwide with a number of projects in different countries around the world. And the, major, and the majority of your customers are growers, processors, or you have customers all, all along the, product, the productive chain? All along the productive chain, uh, everything from cultivation to processing to uh, R&D to logistics, um, everything from start to finish in the cannabis industry. Okay, excellent. And since, uh, since you're Canadian, uh, uh, I, uh, I I would very much like to ask: How do you see? What difference do you see in the in not not only in the regulatory environment, but also in the business uh, in the ease of doing business environment between uh, between, for instance, Quebec and uh, and and the English Canadian provinces? Um, there's a bit of a challenge. Uh, luckily, most people in Canada, with English being a second language, do understand English. Um, each province in Canada has their own versions of regulatory compliance, even though the federal government did release standards. Uh, their interpretation of those standards does vary from province to province. But we found that most people that start a cannabis production facility or start a venture understand business, they understand the product, they understand the regulations, and it becomes very easy to talk with them on the same level. So language very rarely uh, comes to play and different jurisdictions very rarely affects our job. 
because we're all in this together and we're all in it to bring cannabis, legal cannabis, and of course, high quality cannabis to those that need it. Excellent. Yeah, that, that, that was a great answer. And we're going to come right to that uh, when, when we ask you what your uh, business, uh, business expansion plans into Mexico are. Mm -hmm. Because indeed there are going to be differences uh, differences here as well. Uh, could, we please, could, could we please change the slide, Fernanda? Thank you. Well, this talk is brought to you by, uh, by Cascadia. So here's the first question, and this is something that that a lot of people who are starting out in the cannabis industry, as you might imagine, uh, uh, ask us uh, ask us uh, very often. They think that uh, having a cannabis business is all about uh, having a business plan, uh, securing a supplier distribution chain, perhaps complying with the law in as much they need to, 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 to fill in and submit applications, but that's about it. But then how do you secure your supply and your distribution chain? So I would ask you, uh, what, uh, what's the security system, uh, the security system you devote your efforts, uh, you, uh, or the security systems you devote your efforts to, and why do stakeholders need one in their facility, regardless of the link they, they, they partake in, in the supply chain? Excellent question. So aside from regulatory compliance, essentially a security system or a security program is based around risk management. Uh, technically speaking, we are all risk managers in every aspect of life, and it's no different for a cannabis facility. The idea is that you wanna protect the assets within that facility, it could be product, it could be equipment, it could be intellectual property, and more importantly, it's your staff members. It's the people that work within the facility. So a security system almost becomes a necessity to ensure that you have the right tools to be able to protect that facility, do an investigation should something happen in that facility, and learn how to make it better for the future. We call that a risk management profile. You assess the risks that are inherent to your facility or potentially inherent to your facility, you identify those risks on a piece of paper, on a legible document. You ensure that you add technology, processes, people, policies and procedures to those risks to reduce the chance of it happening. And should it happen, you have the ability to investigate how it happened, why it happened, when it happened through technology in order to make it better for the future and to make sure you reduce the likelihood of that same incident happening again. Okay, and, and perhaps an ancillary question in order here would be, um, how important is uh, to develop a system that has a quick response to any potential threat? It becomes very important. We, we call it layers of protection. The idea is that you want to design a security system that detects something that's abnormal from the second it happens all the way through your facility. So if you don't have early detection, Essentially, you're allowing somebody to almost enter in your facility and go to the vulnerable areas, whether that be inside your secured storage vaults, whether that be intellectual property locked away in a cabinet. If you don't detect them along the path, you're just increasing the chance that they'll get away with what it is they're trying to obtain. So we call that layers of security. It could be motion detectors, it could be door contacts, it could be fence disturbance systems, it could be camera systems. Nonetheless, as soon as somebody comes onto your site that is not allowed to be there, you should detect that and you should automatically do any responses that are required to reduce the likelihood they're actually take what it is they're there to get. All right, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so would you say that uh, prevention is the main challenge in designing a security system that works correctly or there are other challenges that are just as important? There are other challenges that are just as important. Um, the reality is a security system operates the same no matter where you are in the world. An intrusion detection system detects intrusions and elicits a response. Video surveillance records incidents that happen. Uh, access control restricts somebody to a certain area in your facility that you don't want them to be in that area to begin with. The challenges that are inherent with cannabis facilities specifically is making sure that the security systems that you deploy and that you design not only are based on regulations and compliant with the regulations, ensuring that you follow any risk management protocols that you have created, but it also makes sure the security system is conducive for a production environment. I can tell you for sure, a security system will be different in a cannabis facility than it would in a simple warehouse because cannabis has grown a certain way. 
It's subject to different lighting levels. It's subject to fans that blow plants back and forth. Maybe it's an outdoor grow. Maybe it's a greenhouse subject to a lot of light and dark situations. Nonetheless, security systems are very specific when it comes to cannabis production facilities, but they do follow uh, tested and true methodologies in designing a system, making sure they're compliant with the regulations, making sure they're compliant with your risk management profile. Together, those challenges can be overcome to ensure that you have an ideal production environment. Okay, I would like to hear your opinion about uh, trying to, uh, to set a security system in a, in a jurisdiction or even another country that doesn't necessarily have the, say the internet or, or, or the power infrastructure necessary to support that system. How, uh, how do you cope with that challenge? Because of course, I mean, there are specific needs of customers, particularly if they're international cannabis companies, they already have in mind how they're going to protect their IP, how they're, how they're going to protect their hardware, software, so on and so forth. And of course, the raw materials. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean, and I have seen this in a lot of industries here in Mexico, that doesn't necessarily mean that their location can actually support that system. So they have to do everything on their own. Um, okay, have you encountered that? How do you cope with that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. We've encountered that before. I think the key is to when you're looking for a facility, when you're looking for land to develop a facility, these are in things that you need to understand should be at the forefront. So in other words, if you're looking for some land that you want to purchase, do a little bit of research, make sure it has the proper utilities, make sure it has the proper communication. But that being said, if you already have a facility or a plot of land that is in a remote area that does not have internet connection, there are other technologies that you can use, such as wireless which is basically your cell phone, such as satellite, which are obviously the satellites that are evolving around the earth. There are different things you can do, but also keep in mind that security is not always technical. You don't always have to apply technical security. You can apply physical security. Maybe that means there's a security guard that sits in your front of your office and does a patrol every hour. Maybe it means that you just do hard locks everywhere to ensure that somebody can't just bust into your front door or open it and get into wherever they need to do. So there are technologies out there that you can use if there is no communication. It could be closed loop also, which means it doesn't actually leave your facility. It just communicates to a guard on site. Not necessarily ideal, but it absolutely can be done. Okay, okay. And I'm going to take that last comment of yours to move, to, to move on to the next slide, please, Fer. How can we know, particularly if we are first starters in the cannabis industry, that we are hiring, hiring the right security company? This is all the more important, I suppose, when you're hiring physical security, because there's an element of trust involved, right? So uh, are there any tips you can share with us as to how, how to know that we're making the right investment? Yeah, absolutely. So as an example, my team, myself, we are often engaged by our clients to review quotes that have been sent in from installers in a cannabis facility. And one of the key things that we look for is not just experience in installing cannabis uh, conducive security systems, it's how they articulate that they are installing the proper system. How do they articulate in that quote that they're meeting the regulations, that they understand the regulations, they understand the risk profile, they understand your business model, they understand what it is that you think are assets and what they think are assets. So really tip number one is when you're reviewing a quote, make sure that they are actually explaining how they're going to deploy the system and how that system meets the regulations and your risk management profile. Uh, all too often I have seen where a quote comes in and it's just a line item. It just says, we're gonna give you 50 door contacts, but it has no explanation of how those door contacts are going to work, why 50 are needed and how it abides by the regulations. So again, tip number one, review the quote. If it's very streamlined and doesn't really explain much, that's a red flag for you. The second thing is trust. As you mentioned before, trust is very important. Perhaps you have somebody that you know that can install a system. It doesn't matter that they may not know the regulations. It doesn't matter that they may not understand your risk management profile, but because they are friends and you trust them, they will learn. They will know those regulations backwards and forwards by the time it comes to install the system. They will know your risk management profile because they are friends of yours and they care. And the third thing is, third tip, is that if you're reviewing a quote and it doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies, that doesn't give you that gut feeling that it's correct. You read it and you say, do I really need these many devices? What is a, what is a vibration detector? Why do I need a 360 camera? 
if your gut is telling you that it may not be the best for you and it just doesn't seem right, there's a good chance it isn't. So also follow your gut feeling. If it's something you don't know, ask the questions, ask why you need something, ask them to explain how it is that their design is compliant, but what else can they do to make it compliant? All too often I've seen installers give a quote that includes everything and very expensive devices that are way too much money and way too much overkill. If you don't question it, you're gonna end up spending a lot more money than you need to. Uh, this is, you raise a very important point because uh, of course uh, there are certain cultural differences involved in what I'm about to say, but yes, uh, there, there are some people that as customers feel somehow afraid to question or to ask whatever they are selling them because they feel that since they are starting out in the cannabis industry, they know nothing and, and, and therefore and therefore they second guess themselves. I don't know if I explain myself correctly. And the problem with that is, is precisely that you can end up getting engulfed into paying something that, uh, that doesn't really pay out because it, it, it doesn't meet your needs. So um, are there to make, in, in your opinion, do, uh, are there too many companies out there that are selling, uh, that are selling, you know, smoke or companies that are, that are uh, that aren't really meeting uh, customer uh, customers' needs in the cannabis industry? Uh, because I can tell you, we know because of the from many jurisdictions, that for we, we have this uh, inside joke, you know, that uh, uh, there are. Nine out of ten uh, uh, fake, ser fake service providers. So it is important in that regard to learn how to uh, how to sort them out. W would you would you be of that opinion? Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, um, in any industry, as we already know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. There's advertising that is done to make you believe that the person that you're hiring knows their job. It's no different than a general contractor that may come to do something at your house. You've heard of horror stories about hiring them. They come in and they just do a horrible job. Unfortunately, in the security, in the technical security industry, not a lot of people understand how these technologies work. And so they rely on what we call an integrator or a security system installer to know what it is that they're doing and to do the right thing at the right time. But that being said, I find that more often than not, uh, security installers don't know exactly what is needed for a cannabis facility. They don't understand the regulations. And so what they end up doing, is giving you a quote, they give you a design that has too many devices in it. They say that they're experienced. They try to show you all the experience that they have outside of the cannabis space. You hire them and things go sideways. Really the only thing that you can do that is a sure win is to engage in somebody that knows what it is that is needed, a consultant, a friend, somebody else, another licensed producer that got their license. Go ahead and talk with them and say, hey, did this company work out for you? Uh, what is it that you found that didn't work for you and how can I make my facility better? Unfortunately, because it is a technical based system, you do have to rely on the integrators, but you do have help on your side. I would say also, um, it's if you, again, get that, gut feeling that maybe it's a smoke and mirror show, maybe it's a dog and pony show, maybe they're just telling you too many awesome things and they're claiming that they know everything there is to know. I can tell you right now, anybody that claims that they know everything there is to know about a cannabis facility is lying. None of us know exactly what is needed. We have experience in what has worked in the past. We do know what is better in a facility and what is worse in a facility, but we never claim that we understand the regulations a thousand percent we understand all technology a thousand percent, but we do know the people who can tell us those answers. So really it's making sure you've got a, a solid network, talk to your friends, talk to other licensed producers, ask around who the best installers are, check out that quote, make sure it gives you the warm and fuzzies, make sure your gut tells you it's the right decision, engage the consultants if you need to, then eventually you're gonna find that it's gonna be an easier process. Excellent, excellent. Next slide, please. Great piece of advice. So um, precisely because nobody knows, <laughs> no, 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 nobody knows everything and nobody can reasonably claim to know everything in this nascent industry. Uh, and if you say that uh, 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 in Canada, where the market and the regulatory environment is much more advanced than here, uh, you can, uh, one can only imagine what's, what's happening in Latin America. So, um, 
regulatory, uh, regulatory environment, the regulatory compliance is important, but uh, has it ever crossed your mind that perhaps the government is placing too many requirements on, on, company, uh, on companies or that, that perhaps are, they are being too, too stringent, too strict on, on cannabis, com cannabis companies that are trying to run their business? Why do you think that they need that much security for, for a cannabis facility? Perhaps they should be more, uh, they should be stricter with, uh, with some links in the productive chain than others. What, what are your views on this? Excellent question. So I will speak to Canada first, because as we all know, Canada was at the forefront of legalization and rolling it out on a federal level in such a size. Um, the reality is it was something new. And the government of Canada had to rely on standards that were created under different legislation. Um, as an example, they had to rely on what we call the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act for any security requirements for the cannabis regulations. And those regulations between the two of them are quite different. So really, it's more a matter of in Canada, it was an unknown situation. They may not have understood security technology fully. They're still trying to develop the regulations, understand how cannabis should be grown, understand how it's going to be transported. They did not necessarily know how security affects cultivation and production and how production needs to take into consideration security. So it was lessons learned. I would say in the beginning, it was overkill. It was the government throwing everything at it as possible to ensure that public is safe, to ensure the building is safe, to ensure that, that anybody working inside the facility is safe. So good on them. And over the years, we learned, and of course the government learned, that certain things work well in certain environments and certain things don't. We find that anywhere else in the world, based on them looking at the Canadian regulations, based on how the Canadian regulations has evolved over time, um, they are more looking to say, okay, what worked and what didn't work? Do we really need what Canada had dictated was needed in the beginning? Or can we just do what it is that we believe is right with a minimal amount of security? So long and the short of it is, Canada was on the forefront, made some mistakes, we've learned from them, and that's how us consultants are able to give our knowledge to those other countries, in, including Mexico, to let you know what worked for us in Canada, what works for our cannabis environment, what didn't work, what you should do. And hopefully that we will be able to talk with government officials like we did when we went to Greece. We talked with them and said, what does your security profile look like? Don't necessarily follow Canadian standard 100%. It is a great standard, but is it right for your country? And that's where we come in to be able to say, well, let's take a look at your risk profile. Let's find out the risks that are inherent to your country, to your facility. Let's develop a proper security framework that makes it better for production while keeping your staff and your product safe. Wow, let's make a quick stop on, uh, on your Greece experience. Uh, uh, how was uh, how was the company's uh, what was the company's experience when dealing with uh, uh, with uh, with Greek companies and the Greek government? Were they receptive to what to what you had to say to your risk analysis? Did you encounter uh, certain uh, certain regulatory hindrances you had you had uh, you had to work around? Uh, was the business environment difficult to, difficult to to endure? Uh, how was it? It was actually a very good experience. They were very open to myself and there was my team. There was a few other strategic partners that we have. We went there and met with government officials. We drove around for three days, um, escorted, and we went to different government officials and talked to them about what it is they wanted for security. Or how did they want it to grow? Uh, how do they want their facilities to operate? Or was it going to be legalized medicinal and also recreational? So we talked with them about the trials and tribulations that Canada went through, some of the things that they watch, should watch out for. Um, and to this day, we still speak with them uh, on a government level, but also on a client base level. And the advantage to that is that we work collaboratively as a team based on everybody's knowledge to be able to get to a standard that actually works in an ideal environment. So it was a very good time. It's not the only country we've gone in and, and spoke with the, the regulatory bodies about, especially from a security perspective. Um, they do have different methodologies out there. But a good consultant, a good team will always take a look at those regulatory requirements, those environments and say, how can we enhance what it is that you're trying to do? How do we stop you from going too far? But how do we just not do as little as possible? So they were very collaborative, very, very welcoming. And we had a very, very good week out there. 
Excellent. Interesting point in that you know what, you, uh, what you've got to offer, you know their needs, but you're also receptive. Uh, you as a services provider are, uh, are receptive to the fact that they are on the ground. They know which problems they are going to face, so you need to adapt to that. Because a lot of, uh, uh, and this is a problem uh, in many industries, in many industries, and I think that cannabis is not going to be the exception when this market opens. Many international companies think uh, to sort of enlighten, uh, enlighten locals into what they have to do, when in reality, it, 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 it becomes sort of a symbiotic connection. You know, it's like you adapt your technology, you adapt to your know how your processes to the actual local environment. Some changes, and you have to be open as a company, as an international company, to the fact that some changes will have, uh, will have to be made to make it run right. Absolutely. Wow, great. Um, and now moving to another topic, next slide, please. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, the, the Mexican regulatory framework for cannabis is at least uh, partly based upon the Canadian one. Uh, so based on that and on your experience, not only in other jurisdictions, but, but abroad, do you think it's going to be easy to translate your system uh, here in Mexico, considering uh, the current, uh, uh, the current uh, political, and, uh, political, economic, and even, uh, and even crime landscape uh, we are? Yeah, absolutely. We... First and foremost, we assist people wherever we can. So it doesn't really matter what country you are in, whether it's Mexico, Greece, Portugal, Spain, Canada, the US. From my perspective, our, us consultants are giving knowledge to help regulatory bodies create the framework that is conducive for their own country. So it's welcoming. I don't predict there's gonna be any issues dealing with any local government because we are there to assist. We're not there to push against. We're not there to fight. We're there to offer our knowledge to make that regulation even stronger than it has been in Canada or anywhere else in the world. So again, with our expertise from a security perspective, security doesn't change anywhere you are in the world. The language may change, the technology doesn't. So we're very fortunate to be able to use a global technology that's used almost everywhere, whether it be video surveillance, access control, intrusion detection, whatever you choose, it's generally the same no matter where you go in the world. It's how you deploy that technology that changes. Methodology, same thing. Methods are still used all over the world for risk management, but how you deploy that and make sure that you're doing the proper risk management for your facility changes from country to country. Because we have intimate knowledge of risk management, security systems, and have deployed them in Canada, the US, Portugal, Spain, Greece, uh, Jamaica, we're very fortunate to be able to be international and kind of see what's worked in other countries with the same risk profile, which could be enhanced in other countries. And we can bring that to Mexico and the Mexican government. Excellent answer. Yeah, so deployment is the key. Since, uh, since, the, uh, since the assets, the services you provide, the hardware, the software are the same, uh, the, way you present, uh, the way you present them, the way you reconfigure them to address, uh, to, to, to address uh, national or local issues are, uh, is what is going to make the difference between uh, those companies that are actually able to make good use of, of your services and companies that uh, 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 and companies that don't. Because, uh, and I would like to hear your opinion on this. Would you say that your services, your technology, are for everyone within the uh, within the cannabis industry? Yeah. So one thing I will clarify. So when I mentioned technology. We are not installers. We are partnered with very good installers. We are more consultants that give the direction to the installer based on what we know of the regulations. We're the ones that create the application documents. So we're essentially the consultants in the background to ensure that the client gets what they need and the installer does things the way that we would like them to do. But that being said, um, our skill set from a risk management point of view, knowing our technology is applicable anywhere in the world but we do have to ensure that we address the threats and the risks that are associated with every country and every building. So we also produce what is called a threat and risk assessment. It's a formal document that we create after doing research into the local areas, after doing research into the threats and risks that are associated with the country. We create a formal document that says, hey, these are the risks that are associated with your building. 
These are how we recommend you mitigate those risks. This is how we recommend what you should do should a risk happen to your facility. And this is how you make it better in the future. Those skills are transferable no matter where you are in the world because every country has its own inherent risk. Okay, yes, yes, uh, yes, in regard. And I would like to rephrase my question uh, in, in, in that regard because it, it is true what you say. So uh, would you say that uh, every company Will be a, will be able to make good use of a, the consultancy, the deliverables such as the risk uh, the risk assessment documents, so as to be able to implement it uh, implement them by itself. Have you ever found companies that, uh, that that have worked with you that they have paid you? You do the risk assessment, and they just find find themselves utterly unable to implement what you said that uh, what you said they needed. Um, this is important because, uh, be, uh, because as you see in the slide, um, that uh, directly correlates with the easiness to translate your security system experience to Mexico. Uh, do, would you say, uh, in other words, would you say that companies need to have a minimum uh, sophistication experience to make good use of your services? No, the answer is no. And the reason I say that is because our services are done in very, what I call plain English. It's we describe what it is that we are doing. We give you the tools to be able to read our documents. And by the end of reading that document, understand why we did what we did, understand what it is that you may have to do, uh, give you the tools to make the decisions that you need to decide and let you know the outcomes of whether or not you decide to do it or not. I can say for sure, I, about 80% of our clients, and we're up to about 460 clients thus far, I would say 80% always came back to us and said, you know, Chris, I, I can't really deploy what it is that you're asking me to do. I don't really agree with all the technology you've thrown to this. I know it may be needed for regulatory compliance. I know it's what you recommend, but I just can't do it. And my answer back is always, us consultants are there to recommend the best path forward, but it doesn't have to be the only path. Just because we come forward and say, hey, this is what you need to do, you can always come back and say, is there another way? And the answer is always yes. We will always work with you, no matter what it is. We will present you with the best path forward. We'll give you the answers that you need. We'll let you know the risks of maybe not deploying or listening to what it is our advice is. But it doesn't mean that it can't be done. And we will always be there in the background to ensure that you are successful, whether it be based on our recommendations or recommendations we come together uh, to, to decide, whether it be discussions, maybe a little bit of heated discussions back and forth. Nonetheless, it is your facility, it is your venture. We are there to assist in any way we possibly can, but it doesn't mean you have to take whatever it is we give you as gospel. We will work with you until it works for you. Great answer. Great answer. Solid. Well, um, those are all the questions. Those are all the questions in the presentation. I will have one last question that has more to do with uh, a, with management, uh, management as such, management regarding your uh, your company. When expanding into uh, into other countries, are you looking? Are you looking to partner with local service providers? Are you going to hire local consultants? How do you see yourself expanding abroad? What are the future plans for your company? Future plans have always been collaboration. So it's, I don't believe that CSB security is going to do all the work themselves. That would be a silly assumption because we can't be in every country all at once. The idea is that we create partnerships, people that we trust, people that we know could be boots on the ground on behalf of CSB or contracted by CSB. So we personally don't contract any installation companies uh, we leave that for other people like general contractors that create and build the facility. But as consultants, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't contact somebody within Mexico, let's say, that we trust, that speaks English, we understand the language, we understand risk management, and they are a really solid firm. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't contract them to say, could you please go out and take a look at this facility for us? Could you take some pictures? What is your opinion? What do you believe is necessary? Yes, we will always be the people in charge. We have to be. There has to be one head to roll when it comes to security. But it doesn't mean that we won't work with everybody else. I personally believe in collaboration. I do not believe that one person or one people and their team can actually take over the world. So yes, the answer is we will work with people on the ground. It's the smartest choice. Very, very great. 
Uh, well, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know if the audience has some questions. Uh, please feel free to uh, to to raise your hand, open your mics, or write them down in the chat. I'll I'll, I'll be happy to re to relate them to uh, to our guests. There's a question coming in. Uh, Felipe Calleros, uh, would you like to ask a question yourself? Or, yes, or yes indeed. Go um, ahead. Um, are you able to hear me, Mr. Chris? I certainly can. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have a question that it's a quick one, I believe. Uh, what do you believe it's the most important security system that you have implemented or used for a cannabis-based uh, company or, or a cannabis-based uh, crop? for example. What is the important, okay, most important technology in my opinion is your intrusion detection system. That's the system that ensures that you detect anybody should they come onto your facility without being authorized to do so as soon as possible. So that could be door contacts, motion detectors, glass break detectors, um, it could be panic buttons. So I believe intrusion detection is your most important followed by access control, because you want to make sure that you restrict access to your facility in certain areas within your facility. And lastly, video surveillance. And the reason I put video surveillance last is that video surveillance is subject to a lot of environmental concerns. They're not always deployed in the right areas. And furthermore, you may not want to deploy them inside of your grow rooms, as an example. They're subject to moisture and, and all those kinds of things. So to me, the most important is your intrusion detection system. And if I can have a follow-up question in content. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. And Mr. Grace, considering that, and unfortunately, Mexico, it's a really insecure, insecure country. We know that, and it's something that unfortunately happens. Uh, do you believe that it's expensive for, or would you recommend to a Mexican startup company that wants to invest in cannabis, that they need a lot of money in security to like, uh, be secure? <laughs> um, the answer is no. And the reason I say that is, as I mentioned before, security technology plays a part in your risk management profile, but it's not the end all be all. Sometimes you can throw policy and procedure at it. And what I mean by that is you can replace a camera with, let's say, a security guard. So instead of having 15, 20, 30, 40 cameras in your facility, you can have one security guard that patrols that facility. It really is based on where your facility is, government regulations. Keep in mind, we have to make sure that we abide by any regulations. If they stipulate that you need certain technology in your facility, we have no choice but to design it. But in true essence, security in itself, technology is a small part of it. Policy, procedure, people, methodologies is a bigger part. So you may be able to get away with a security system that still meets your risk management profile, still conducive for a cannabis facility, still abides by the regulations, but will not cost you a lot of money. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Great. Any other questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Uh... Well, I will have a uh, I will have another question for you, Chris. Um, uh, I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you have already operated, provided services in other Latin American countries. Is that right? Yes, I have. Uh, where, uh, where exactly? So there's Brazil as an example. Um, did you say Latin American companies or, or, or any countries? Latin American countries. Ah, Latin American countries. Um, so to date, we have worked on a number of facilities in certain countries, but we have not necessarily completed that work. So we're still in the process of doing so and helping them understand the regulations. In some cases, we're helping to give answers on based on what we believe is, is what the regulations are requiring. But to date, we haven't completed a project in Latin American countries. Okay, and what have been your challenges so far? I mean, the language for starters, right? And, and, and this becomes an important issue when trying to understand regulations because, hey, I can tell you I'm a lawyer and sometimes even I have a hard time understanding my own regulations. How do you cope with that? Essentially, the language barrier does not really become an issue because of translation. Usually there's a lot of translators available. Most entrepreneurs I find speak perfectly good English. 
Uh, nonetheless, if there is any time where there's a translation issue, we usually bring in a third party to make sure that both sides understand the language that's spoken. Um, really, it's a matter of determining what it is that the government wants to do with their security profile, as an example, how they're articulating that to the applicants that are applying for a cannabis facility, and then how it is that we interpret what it is that we thought they meant. And the key to that, and to avoid that potential pitfall, is to have us involved at the government level to begin with. Because if we're there, such as Greece, as an example, if we are there speaking with government regulators and talking with them on the ground to say, well, this is what worked for us, this is what didn't work, what do you wanna do, how do you wanna do it? Then we're essentially helping to create the framework when it comes to security, so that when it's deployed, we automatically understand it, but we can also translate it into a language that everybody can understand. This is a very important issue, and actually leads to another question that has just popped in my mind. It seems to me, based on your on your Greek or or Brazilian experience, that you've sometimes found yourself in situations in in which you've had to educate the government into how they have to implement the their own regulations, the very regulations that they enacted. Right, uh, I believe that, uh, uh, and I want to ask you this because I believe this is the same thing that's going to happen in Mexico. Uh, for for the benefit of our audience, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to elaborate. For instance, if you apply for a processing license license for medical use, um, uh, among the requirements you'll find that you need to submit a secure a security protocol manual. You need to tell uh, to tell Coffee Priest, the Mexican DEA how you're going you're gonna to ensure that your facilities and the, uh, 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 and the raw materials, uh, the raw materials, the cannabinoids you extract and so on and so forth are going to be kept safe and are not going to end up, you know, in the black market or in the power of cartels. So the, the, the regulations only say, hey, you have to submit a security protocol manual. What that means, I'm not sure even the government knows. Uh, have you, encountered, have you encountered yourself in this situation, as I, as I suspect? How do you deal with it? How receptive governments are to, to, to you telling them how to, uh, how to ask for that requisite or how to consider that requisite fulfilled? Yeah, I mean, even in the Canadian regulations, in some way, we have actually helped formulate the new regulations. So just by being practitioners in the industry, we've almost set the standard. And I say we as consultants, not just CSB Security Inc. There's a lot of great consultants in the Canadian space. But the point is, is that through us educating government uh, officials, we allow them to make the decisions that they need to make in a more informed manner. So as an example, if you're talking about during your application process, you need to submit a manual that says, how are you going to protect your facility? There's nothing wrong with that, but where the challenges really lie is in the eyes of the regulator. So it's the person that's going to actually grant you your license. They're gonna take a look at your security and go, wow, this is fantastic, I really like this. And the second they go and look at another applicant that may not have the same security, they may say, wait a second, well, why would this person have all this security and this one doesn't? Then they may look right. at another uh, application and realize, wow, this person has even more security than the, the second person. And so what ends up happening is disparity. So each regulator will have their own idea of what they think is a good security deployment, what they think should be done inside a facility. So without a formal regulation that states, you should do this, you shall do this, you're going to end up having disparity, unfortunately, when it comes to licensing. One uh, licensor, one, one person that's going to inspect your facility may love the security, and the next time somebody comes into your facility, they may hate it. So the biggest challenges that we find and why we want to educate governments into how to ideally roll security systems out for cannabis is that we help them create the framework to allow those who are applying to build their security systems based on a level standard and then enhance that system should they choose to. As an example here in Canada, there is a baseline standard that all applicants must follow. A security consultant say, that's great, that's a baseline standard, but we also recommend you do X, Y, Z above that standard to further protect your assets. When we deliver these application documents and these videos to Health Canada, we identify to Health Canada that some security devices are regulatory compliance and some are business decisions. Some are done extra because that's what the client wants to do. 
So the key thing is understanding what the government wants to do, how they envision security rolling out. If they don't envision it just yet and they leave it up to the applicants, it's up to the applicant and consultants to design a conducive system because you may be setting the trend. Exactly, setting the trend. Totally, totally, I totally share that. Okay, um, uh, members of the audience, uh, do you have any other, uh, any other question, uh, comment, anything like that? Okay, um, well, uh, that will be the end, of, uh, the, end, the end of the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Bessinoa. Thank you very much. Stay very safe much for everybody. your time. Good luck. So uh, it's so nice, so nice to meet you, Chris. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for sharing your experience, uh, your experience, your knowledge, uh, your knowledge with us. Feel uh, uh, feel free to, to 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 look at his web page. Uh, can they can they reach uh, reach out to you on LinkedIn, for instance? Oh, of course. Right. Yep, absolutely, and through Cascadia, the, the whole umbrella of of what we're trying to provide, for sure. Great. Right. Well, this chat uh, was brought to you by uh, by Logic, Legal Cannabis Expert, and Cascadia Group. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, continue continue enjoying the very insightful conferences such as this one uh, uh, within the Mexico Cannabis Summit. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.